Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ascent Podcast. My name is Brian, and I'll be your guide today as we dive deep into uncertainty and what that's all about and how it affects all of us in some way, at some point, at some time in our lives, having to navigate, make tough decisions, not knowing what the results are going to be. Sometimes that can feel paralyzing to us, make us feel stuck, make us feel like we don't have a way <clears throat> or a clear path forward. So that's what we're going to get into today. So let's jump into it. You know, it's interesting having this as a topic today, talking about uncertainty and, you know, how to find your way forward when you feel uncertain about certain things. And as life would have it, I was expecting a, an additional guest this morning and got a call about half hour before going live here and they can't make it. So psh, talk about uncertainty. And those are, those are the realities of life. And that's exactly what we're talking about today is I think as humans, we want to feel like we have control. I think that's one thing that I'll talk about. So I always think of uncertainty as the opposite of control or feeling like you're in control as humans that the we want a guarantee. It's like you can go to the car dealership. What do you want? I want to, I want a guarantee. You know, I want something to tell me that this I'm making the right choice and this thing is not going to break down on me. And it's going to last me for the next 10 years. And you want all of those things. And that is obviously the opposite of what uncertainty is, right? Because that, but that's the nature of certain things. So Chris, from your perspective, when someone says, do you feel certain? Do you feel confident? Do you need certainty to make decisions? How about you share a little bit about your philosophies and your thoughts on that? Well, I don't, I mean, in the perfect world, we're always going to have, it'll, it'll be there. There's certainty in a perfect world. Let's, let's, let's use that as the baseline to begin with. So, and I think I was trying to think about this last night and I, I was drawing blanks all over the place other than the fact that I, I, with my new chapter that I'm in the, in the midst of writing over this last three weeks, I have all of a sudden come face to face, staring down the dreaded uncertain emotion of uncertainty. And I've been, I mean, it has been chasing me all over the place emotionally. And it has, it's, it has literally had me questioning my very existence. I recently embarked on a journey. We'll call it a combination of things, some higher learning, some career pivot, getting a little deeper down the rabbit hole when it comes to leadership and, and uh, self-improvement. Basically what I'm doing is I was had the good fortune and I'll, I'll call it the good, and that's a good way to look at it to begin with is that it, this is something good. Regardless of whether there's uncertainty involved, at the, end, at the end of the day, there's something good that's at the heart of all of this. Um, so, I, so I recently, as you know, Brian, got involved with a brand new tech learning center out on the west side of the island, which, first of all, is a 35-mile drive. Let me just say that every day. So anyway, the idea was we, we were taking some of the best and brightest of a couple of west side high schools, and we are literally getting them certified as electrical technicians. Well, in the process, we thought it'd probably be good if I got myself certified too, if I'm going to actually teach the subject matter. Makes sense, huh? We've been in tech for 20, over 20 years. And I'm obviously the, the seat I sit in is more of a project manager slash customer service slash, 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 slash. The more I got into this, the more I found out how complicated this, this industry is and how specific it is. And that's why they're looking for some, that's why they're constantly on the look, lookout for more people to actually work in this industry. And I'll be honest with you, this thing has been ripping me a new one. I got through the first module barely ended up shining at the end. And I figured the, the first module had all the math stuff into it. Right. And don't get me wrong. I'm a good math student. But this is some next level math that we're dealing with, right? I mean, next level. So I got through the first level, got kind of got my good feeling back. We open up the second module, and it is times 10. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's bananas. I mean, we're talking about from from the the acronyms 
to the, the buzz phrases, the whole nine yards. And I have been, I, I feel like I've been barely treading water and it has just really been working on my confidence, my general self aware, you know, sense of self and well being. And it has been a challenge I have had to have. Matter of fact, I'll be honest with you, I almost quit. <laughs> I almost quit. But I'm not a quitter. So at the end of the day, this is something I have to figure out. And the reality is that some of this has to do with some of my limiting beliefs. We talked about that in the past. Um, I touched on a little bit of something we took that we, uh, one of our previous subjects, the imposter syndrome. Am I an imposter trying to thrive in this? situation it has been challenging me every which way from sun up to sundown and then you add in one more component i started a new class another class through the ua program to get my teaching credentials now that's a little bit less it's just a lot of dry reading but anyway the bottom line is though i've now had to kind of split my brain and devote some time to the the one situation while also devoting my time to my daily situation, which is the school. So needless to say, it has been a roller coaster of sorts. At the end of the day, I'm still very much committed to this, but there's some work to be done. Let's put it like that. And I believe there's a lot of people in the audience who are hearing this and can in some way relate to this or apply it to whatever they may be going through or feeling in their own lives as well. So that's what we're going to focus in on today. And this is actually perfect. So we're going to break this out into three different areas as we, as we talk this through today for our audience. First area is we're going to talk about how to uh, aspire to clarity. So to get clear on what it is that you are truly trying to achieve or trying to accomplish. So we'll talk about that first and foremost, because that's the, the foundational piece. Then we're going to talk about sparking confidence, how to make sure that when you are making these decisions and you have to make these tougher decisions and move yourself forward, that you're doing it from a place of confidence. And so we'll talk about that. And then the last thing is commit to your own growth, because through this and as you work your way through, there there is... Uh, essentially this path of growth that you will be on and that you will have to try to stay on and maintain. So we want to talk about some of the foundational pieces of that and why that's important to be able to uh, grow and stay on that path and move yourself forward. So those are the three primary areas we want to talk about. Chris, I want to add this to what you were just saying, because obviously you've added a lot to your plate in a very short term here, and it's got your head kind of spinning and just trying to figure out what's what. But that takes me right back to a couple of things I want to touch on. First one being awareness. And it sounds like to me, just based on your description, that what you thought and what it turned out to be were kind of two different things, right? But now you have this sense of awareness of really what you've gotten yourself into. Is that kind of accurate? Very accurate. Very accurate. I honestly, not to interrupt you. No. I actually saw it as a little bit different than what it actually was. And maybe that's part of that's Well, I shouldn't say maybe part of that's on me, but I also sometimes the old adage is you don't know what you know until you know it. And this is a new program. I have to keep, these are things that I have to continually remind myself, especially when I ratchet up the pressure and the, and the anxiety and the and which kind of breeds insecurity. It really kind of whacks away at your self-confidence. Uh, things like that. I mean, and, and those, and to be honest with you, those are things that are, especially from a male perspective, those are things that is, those are hard pills to chew on, but they're no less the pill that I need to chew on, but I got to be real about it. I got to be honest about it. Honesty pays in my book. You know, you have a lot of people and I've got friends and I think we all have friends out there. You, you make these admissions about how you're really feeling about something and, you know, and, and how inadequate you may be. And in my case, it's how inadequate I feel, but that's also the, sometimes that's the, it helps the turn, the, the turn the tide on, mm -hmm. on the situation is by admitting that you're vulnerable, that you're not functioning the way you believe you can function or should function in these situations. And I think that's a lot of people's downfalls in life is that they, they get so, 
you know, and, I'm, and I'll kick in a couple of other words like, so be so prideful, you know, you allow your pride to take over and your ego to, to get involved. And pretty soon, you know, you, 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 you start walling yourself off from the support and the help that you probably need. And right now I need a, I need all the support and all the help I can get to, to, to try to get to that point. Cause I'm just looking, I know that if I stay the course on this, if I keep putting in the work that at a certain point in time, the light will come on, you know, it may not, it may not beam at 150 Watts, but the light will come on at a certain point. I'll create that, start to create that muscle memory. And I know that things will, you know, they'll start to move forward. Like I, that, like I know they, they can be. And the other part of it for me is that what I have determined is during these periods of uncertainty, I have to lean on the things that I know I do well, because those components do play a part in what I'm doing, my day-to-day existence and, and my mission statement. So I've got to lean into that stuff as I try to, you know, rebuild a foundation that seems to be kind of teetering at different points. There's no easy, there's no easy answer to this.